All right, let's get into a little bit more debate style, right? Abby Martin was on Pierce Morgan's show to debate. This woman looks like the Joker when she smiles. Her name is Emily Schrader. I'm not kidding. She has that Joker smile because it comes, you'll see, you'll see. Uh, will you give any condemnation of Hamas? Let's get into it. This one's pretty base, guys. If you haven't had a chance to do so, go ahead and smash the Liz Ike. And if you're new, don't forget to like, sub, and share. I told you, wait till she smiles harder. You're going to see it's like a Joker smile. I do. And I think that the fact that this debate is raging on shows that what Israel is doing is egregious enough. The fact that people are actually having a debate on whether or not it is genocide. Like you said, the International Court of Justice has agreed that there's a plausible case for genocide. I think that you just clearly articulated several factors that Israel is, in fact, carrying out. The mental bodily harm and carrying about conditions uh, to destroy a group of people. Clearly, the complete siege on Gaza, the elimination or the prevention, rather, of water, food, electricity, the prevention of aid, um, widespread preventable illnesses, uh, killing people. Now uh, we see two million people on the brink of starvation. Clearly, these are all intended to destroy a group of people. When you compound that with the indiscriminate bombing in the most densely populated places on Earth, I would absolutely constitute that as genocidal killing. And then peers compound that with the fact that there's genocidal intent. This is usually one of the hardest things to prove in a case of genocide. Not the case in Israel's genocide in Gaza. We have five pages just in the ICJ ruling that clearly lay out the explicit intent to carry out genocide. And I'll just point to two. Uh, the Israeli president who said shortly after October 7th that uh, no civilian in Gaza is innocent um, and that they should have overthrown Hamas. And because they yep. didn't, they are essentially worth, uh, you know, killing. And then you have the defense minister shortly after October 7th that these are human animals and we need to act accordingly as he announced the complete siege of Gaza. So taking all that into account, I would absolutely constitute what is happening is genocide. And Israel needs to be held accountable and stopped immediately because it's the gravest crime against humanity that a state can commit. Okay. Well said uh, there, Abby Martin. Yeah, we got to remember a lot of the things that IDF members and Israeli uh, officials, government officials have said on camera is very damning. All right, let's bring in Harley Quinn. Emily Schrader, I mean, there's no doubt that if you study the direct quotes from some members of Netanyahu's cabinet, they are certainly speaking in a genocidal way. There's no question. There's enough of that being said since October the 7th. There's also yeah. a, a I actually would dispute that. I actually take issue with some of the comments that she made. For example, when we're talking about human animals, it was specific in the context. And if you understand Hebrew, you know uh, that the context of this was... Oh, now we got to know Hebrew. Now we got to understand and know Hebrew to know what they really, what she really meant, what the context was. You guys see this? You see? <laughs> Here we go with the exceptionalism. Speaking specifically about Hamas terrorists, who I would agree with that description. Of course, not all Palestinians are human animals and Palestinian civilians. There are many innocent people. However, as President Herzog said, it is also true that there is a certain degree of complicity with many of the people of Gaza. Now, does that mean that they deserve to die, as she stated? No, of course not. But it's not the same thing as being innocent either. But that would imply that there are no innocent people in the Palestinian side. Exactly. <laughs> Well, of course, they're not all uh, Hamas, but they're not all innocent either. She walked right into that one. Harley Quinn walked right, in, right into that one because she's letting you know that she still doesn't really believe that they're all innocent. Oof. I don't think that that's true, that there's no innocent people. Isn't that what I think you just that effectively said? I think that there is a certain degree of complicity with many of the population. How as many? we see in, in the polls, according to their polls, a Palestinian conducted How many? Poll, How many? over 70% of the people in Gaza support the actions of October 7th. I wish it wasn't the case. But Emily, you're, but just, that using that, you're just using that poll 
you're using that poll to paint all civilians as guilty. Do you I realize am, that? I when am you absolutely do that, you're not. Dehumanizing I literally Palestinians. stated the opposite. Yes, you I are. said 70%. You're saying that because I Palestin said 70 percent. Emily, of course, there are innocent Palestinians. So what does that mean? But what Emily is giving me strong Karen vibes. Are you guys getting that feeling from her? Emily's giving me Karen vibes. Like, I feel like any minute she's going to, you know, I don't know. Like, let me see your manager. <laughs> any minute she's going to show up and be like, what are you doing here? Do you work here? Are you supposed to be in this neighborhood? Let me talk to your manager. That's the vibe that I'm getting from Emily. But notice what is happening here. She's pretty defensive here. That is not what I said. But that is actually what she's saying. She's basically telling you that there aren't really no innocent people. But you say like there's some, and she said the poll was like 70%. If I tell you that the poll says 70% of the people support what Hamas did, 70% is the majority, obviously. So I'm also telling you that the majority of the people are not innocent. I, you're, you're rationalizing collective punishment and starvation of 2 million people, 1 million kids. That's what you're rationalizing by saying Abby, that 70% agree with the Over 17,000 trucks Emily. of humanitarian aid have entered Gaza. Some of them that are being stopped right now on the border are actually being prevented from entering by Egypt, not by Israel. Israel has inspected them and approved them. Furthermore, the reason that aid isn't being distributed properly isn't because of Israel. It's because of Hamas, who has been taking the aid, shooting Palestinian civilians inside of Gaza. And this is according to Palestinian statements on social media in Arabic who have been speaking about this and then taking that aid and selling it at double, triple, quadruple the prices of what would be the regular market for those items. So you cannot place this all on Israel. But if you say that seven. Actually, we can. And, and this woman is, is full of lies. But actually, we can. Because remember, it was the Israeli people that were blocking the entrance. They were blocking. They actually took like. I mean, because they the different cones. They took different cones and they also took their vehicles and they actually created a barricade to prevent the trucks from getting in. We saw the videos all on social media. Is that Hamas's fault too? Emily. I, I was like, uh, Abby, 70% so of people uh, in Palestine are of this view. 50% of that population are under 18. They're, they're children. So are you including large numbers of children in your assessment that Palestinians or, or believe this way? I don't believe that the statistics of that poll, how they conducted it, included children. However, I don't know. So I would have to investigate that. If it didn't further. include children, then that doesn't include half the people in Gaza. And that's according to whose statistics? According to the Gaza Ministry well, of no, Health, no, no. which is. Oh, so you see this? I believe the poll that says 70% of Palestinians support what Hamas did on October 7th because it supports the narrative for Israel to go in and demolish and kill all the people. But I don't believe the information that says that half of the population in Gaza were children. What? <laughs> you guys see this? No, 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 half the population. Because even this 30,000 well, number hang on, is I'm not, coming from Hamas. I'm not, I, I realize that, but it hasn't been disputed by other agencies. And what she's telling you once again is that the information that comes from the Gaza Health Ministry, anything that comes from Hamas, that it should not be believed. But you should believe everything that the Israeli government tells you. You expose yourself, Emily. Historically, the Hamas... Uh, figures through the Palestinian Health Authority have been broadly proven to be accurate over time, which you 30, know. 30,000 casualties and they're claiming that but, none of them are combatants. Not the, How is that accurate? That's it not doesn't the, even make sense. That's not the number I'm talking about. The number I'm talking about is if half the population of Gaza is under 18, then saying that 70% of the people in Gaza have a view would have to include a lot of children, right? That's and if right. you don't include the children, you don't include half the population, well, then you're talking about a narrow number of people, comparative. Sure, but you also have to consider the fact that Hamas is actively recruiting and indoctrinating youth with this very extremist jihadist ideology. And it's have they been recruiting and, and indoctrinating babies, Emily? The babies that were in the incubators in the hospital, were they recruiting them? Let's, let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about, doesn't the IDF recruit people? Hello? Doesn't the IDF recruit people? 
Doesn't Netanyahu's genocidal government recruit people? Don't they also indoctrine the Israeli children when they are children and teach them just how awful the Palestinian people are? They killed babies. Babies in hospitals. I'm supposed to believe those babies in the incubator are Hamas? Child abuse. It's an unfortunate reality that Palestinian children are dealing with. Why we're we killing loads? Why we're we killing 12, 13,000 innocent children? Whatever the exact number is, is superfluous to the general proportionate effect that so many kids have been killed. I don't agree with this. These numbers. Well, how many do you think have been I killed? Just, we don't know. We do right. not know at this and yet point. You're but you're very happy on the Israel side. You have to consider the fact okay, how many, that there how many, are many of okay, them between the ages of 14 to 17 how many Hamas, who are members of Hamas. How many and Hamas, have seen that proof? She doesn't agree with the numbers that don't support the Israeli narrative. That's what it is. Proven. How many Hamas terrorists have been killed? So we this don't is, know. Oh at least 9,000, though. So you're happy to, to believe states. those numbers? How many people believe those you're, numbers? You're happy to believe those numbers. Of course I'm happy to believe Why? those numbers. Because Israel is a de democratic country with the rule of law, and they hold people accountable when they violate those laws. Right, okay. Pause for a second. People say the United States is a democratic country with laws, and we hold people accountable when they violate those laws. But then think about the police state that we have in this country. Think about police brutality. How many times have police officers been held accountable for police brutality incidents in this country? You see, just because you're a democratic country or just because you are a democracy, which I told you before, we don't have true democracy in this country. That doesn't mean that the laws that you have in place are actually working in a way that is fair to everyone and everybody. We see that right here in the United States. So if you see it doesn't work fairly for everyone in the U.S., what would make you think in a country like Israel that is an apartheid state where the Palestinian people are occupied, what would make you think that the laws that are there in this so-called democratic state is working fairly for everyone there? I mean, you see, I, I think the problem with questioning the yeah. numbers from the Palestinian Health Authority is that most other agencies, independent agencies, broadly agree that these numbers are about right. And if they're right, then 12,000, 13,000 children have been killed. And I would, I would argue that it's very hard to see how the radicalization issue that the Israelis talk about will not be exacerbated by killing 13,000 innocent kids. Right. And can I just address some of the points she made? Because they're all just egregious lies. I mean, she's a paid propagandist for the state of Israel. I think uh, that we Kind of like you of being a paid Egypt, propagandist Emily, for Putin, Emily. Or defending the Chinese Communist Party. You know what? defending Emily, the Chinese Emily, Communist Party. Emily, Emily, let me speak. Let me speak. Let me Emily, the people Emily. See, they don't like it when you start telling the truth about them. They try to interject here. And so all of a sudden it's, oh, you're working for Russia. You see, <laughs> this is already predictable. You're working for Russia. You're a propagandist for China. Emily, Hong let Kong. me Emily, speak. Let, Abby talk. let me speak. Emily, let me speak. You just spoke just flagrant lies for the last minute. When I was on this show 10 years ago, I was actually speaking out against RT on Russia today. Can you say the same? I'm a completely independent journalist. You are literally a paid propagandist for the Israeli military. That you just had the audacity libel. to sit down with an Israeli military official. The Israeli military, uh, and I would be happy oh, so to you just were working it. for free? You literally said that you worked for the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, that you've worked with Stand With Us, which is an appendage of the Israeli government. Let no, me address the, the things that you just threw out there, which are lies. Yes, of course, <laughs> they receive grants from the Knesset. No, they don't. Emily. That is absolutely you are lying. false. Egypt, Israel has, br look it up on, Look it up on the internet, Emily. I'm not sure why you're uh, lying again, I work but this there, is what you guys sure do. You deflect, you lie, you smear. Emily, from the we can't just keep it's speaking over each other the entire it's not time. Legal. Then stop Emily, lying, Abby. Please let me stop speak. Stop lying. Israel has <laughs> Israel has has bragged the fact that Egypt just follows their orders. Okay, so we know that the aid is being prevented not only by fanatical Israelis who are blocking the aid trucks proudly, um, but from Israel themselves, Emily. And we know that. 
almost as many civilians have been shot by Israeli forces just trying to scavenge for aid and food than civilians have died on October 7th. This is regular routine massacres, routine massacres that are happening of just desperate, starving Palestinians that are amassing to seek food. Is there anything that is more depraved than that, That's absolutely than to shoot Earlier desperate this week, seven people million, seeking seven food. Million you can't, you food, can't just keep saying Hamas. Gaza. So let me show you something, guys. Remember in the debate with Owen uh, Jones and with uh, Hen Mazig? Notice that Hen also pointed out, well, you can't say that Israel is purposely starving the Palestinian people because the truck went in earlier this week. Notice how she's using the same talking point that Hen used. These debates weren't that far apart from each other in reference to days. I told you they all say the same things. You can watch a debate with Pierce Morgan on Pierce Morgan show, and then you can watch a debate on someone else's show, PBD podcast or whatever. Different people, but still Zionists, and they're saying the same talking points. I know because you, you peek around and you see all these different shows within one week and you'll hear them saying the same type of rhetoric. So what they're trying to do now is because the truck got in earlier this week, they're trying to use that as an example to prove that this was never an issue in reference to getting food into the Palestinian people, that those things never happened. So that's what they're pointing to. These people are paid liars. Abby is 100% correct. We have all seen the videos on social media of them barricading the roads so that the trucks can't get through. I saw videos on social media of the IDX, IDF, excuse me, actually setting trucks on fire so that the Palestinian people couldn't get the aid. And she can just sit here and just blatantly lie because again, this is what this woman is paid to do. I think these people are coached. I think that they are trained and I think that they are paid. Seven million pounds you, in one day. Let me try. Let me try if I can. Let me try and bring it. Five hundred trucks per day. To, per day. Let, let me come in, if I can bring it back to the debate, which is about the genocide. Uh, on March the twenty sixth, twenty twenty four, UN Human Rights Report called for Israel to be placed under an arms embargo on the grounds it has carried out acts of genocide in Gaza. Uh, Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the Palestinian Territory, said in her report, there were reasonable grounds to believe that Israel was carrying out three of the five acts, which I named earlier, defined as genocide. And she said these were killing Palestinians, causing them seriously bodily or mental harm, deliberately inflicting conditions of life calculated to bring about the physical destruction of the population in whole or in part. So to that point, Emily, let's forget the ad hominem stuff for a moment. On this, you've got the UN, you've got the ICJ, you've got uh, increasingly the Americans actually trying to distance themselves from what's happening here. A, a growing sense that there is, if not full-blown genocide, a version of genocide happening here that meets quite a few criteria. I mean, I think the definition of genocide requires intent to destroy a nation. Um, and that is not what we're seeing. It's not what we've seen since day one. You have to remember the fact that this war was not there started was a by Israel. Minister who Gaza actually said he would be Emily. happy to drop a nuclear bomb on Gaza. That would have been the destruction of well, the population. Well, there are plenty of... Even, even Kamala Harris said that Gaza has to be rebuilt because it looked so damn bad stupid comments from many Israeli politicians that I don't agree well, with. You said earlier that nobody on But this that, is not the on, same thing. Earlier, we did not start on, this Emily, war. This is not a war we Emily, wanted. It I is understand. not a war we started. I've made that point very clear. Israel finish. does have the ability to commit genocide and they are not. Let Why just, would we send 17,000 trucks That's such aid? an Why abusing or crazy thing to say. You have a gun to the head of Palestinian saying we could commit genocide. Hang on, don't all talk over each other. I want to finish my point about the the cabinet member who said that was quite crystal clear in his genocidal intent. He thought it would be fine to drop a bomb, a nuclear bomb, on Gaza. You said earlier that nobody on the cabinet, nobody under Netanyahu from the start of his war, had ever espoused any genocidal thoughts or statements. He did that. Well, I didn't say that no one in, in the government has said that. I said that the quotes she specifically mentioned are inaccurate. Right, but what about the guy who got fired specifically for saying that about he dropping a nuclear bomb? Right. He should so, have been fired. so do you accept there have been people with that mindset on the cabinet? I in, think that there, there are people who have made all kinds of egregious statements on both sides. And I can give you a few examples of genocidal but, intent if you want from the other side. Well, how, that's really the only side. But, you, but, you, that, but that's not that's not the question that you're being asked, uh, Emily. 
Notice how she's trying to pivot. Has proven. We can, we can come to that. We can come to that. But on that point, do you accept then that there are people in Israeli government, albeit he was fired for it, who have espoused genocidal sentiment? They have. I don't know of anyone who is in the current Israeli government well, that no, would support fired. any form of genocide. Right. Has anyone Look ever? Of course, ruling. people have on both Five sides. Pages. Okay, Abby. Uh, let's fast forward to do, do, do this part here. If she condemns Hamas, let's, let's go to this part. Cause this part I think is, but do you condemn Hamas? Okay. Govern the West Bank. Look at what Israel has done but in the West Bank since October 7th. You can't condemn Hamas for what this they did on October Hamas. the 7th. This is not about Hamas. Well, it's all I about Hamas. I condemn what will be get violence about Hamas. inevitably. What are you talking I'm not going to sit here and condemn Hamas. The entire war. I'm sorry? It's in, this entire war has been because of what Hamas did on October the 7th. You can go back Absolutely in history. Absolutely not. You can go Absolutely back in not. history here's, here's. and you can find arguments on both sides in the last 70 years. Right? I've had, no, I've had the arguments not. many times. No, no, no. Because you no, cannot no, see, dispute what you're doing, this. What you're doing is. What am I doing? What you're doing is conflating and pretending like there are two equal sides. Oh, they've just been fighting for decades. There's always reasons on both sides to start the violence. No, that's not true. There's one side that's an occupying colonizing force that continuously and violently expels and subjugates and brutalizes and terrorizes the other side. They are living under the boot of Israeli authorities, whether you're in Gaza and occupied completely militarily by the outside or whether you're living under a fascist military dictatorship in the West Bank. So do you, do, if that you believe- Pierce Morgan is basically trying to make it seem like the Palestinian people and the Israeli people are on the same level and they're not. There is literally one group of people that is in power and the other one is not. The other one is being oppressed. The other one is being occupied. Let me make something very clear to you. I sit up here and I watch a lot of these discussions on this show about this particular issue. And I honestly think some of these people, I look at Pierce Morgan and I look at, um, uh, Karen, uh, Emily there. And I really do believe had we, if we were to go back in time, these would be the same people that would have made excuses and justified slavery in this country. These would have been the same people that would have made excuses. And then when you have Nat Turner's slave rebellion, when you have those revolts try to rise up, when you have the Underground Railroad, these are the people that would try to find a way to blame the slaves from trying to free their oppressor instead of putting the blame on the slave master. I really believe that. I don't think they would have been on the right side of history because they're not even on the right side of history right now when there's video, smartphones, and social media to show you. Okay, so if you the believe, violence. Okay, that let me is ask the root you, of the violence. Let me ask this is you 75 this. years let me of ask you this, Abby. in apartheid. Right, I hear you. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If you believe then that Hamas are a uh, armed resistance, as you put it, and they have, presumably then you believe what they did on October the 7th was justified, do you? I didn't say that. No, no absolutely no. Well, not. Wouldn't I that I'm the not sitting here justifying anything. Isn't I'm the just, logical just extension of your that. argument, if you believe they're an armed resistance and they are, That's not true. They are doing what they're doing because they are responding to acts of terror by another side, surely you would say that what they did was justified. Or if it's not justified, what is it? You either condemn it or you think it's justified. I don't think you can sit in the middle, can you? Um, I Look, I don't need to sit here and give a condemnation of Hamas. I, I, I can explain why Hamas exists. Mm. I don't have to support what they did. I don't have to justify or rationalize it. Yes, so you're not violence sit, in the face uh, of as rape a, as, as a, a method person of who war studies history, is complicit. You can sit Abby. as a person who studies history. Mm. Emily, Emily, you're doing the exact same thing and you're projecting it on me. Okay, so do you condemn the actions of Israel for killing 13,000 children? I don't accept that 13,000 children have been killed. See what they do? Everybody paying attention to what they actually do? Now, Abby flipped it on her, which I think was very smart because it's usually the other way around. People are asking, do you condemn Hamas? But Abby flipped it and said, well, do you condemn what the Israeli government has done in reference to killing all of these children, right? So what do they do? I told you, I think they're coached and trained. So their response is, I don't believe those are the numbers. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. I want to be clear about this, folks. It doesn't matter if it's 13,000, 8,000, 5,000. It does not matter what the numbers are. We're talking about children. 
And this is what people should continue to reiterate when they get that type of pushback. When people tell you, well, I don't think those numbers are true. It doesn't matter. These are kids. And it's probably more than 13,000. Remember the people who are under the rubble have not been counted. Notice they cut off that cap. The total number of 30,000, right? Notice they don't go higher than that anymore, right? That's on purpose. So that is their talking point. That's one of the ways that they come in and try to divert the conversation. So they're trying to pull you away from what Abby is actually asking. So she can just easily say, I don't think those numbers are real. It doesn't matter. These are kids. Kids that I've seen, I've seen these kids on video. I'm sure some of you have too. She's answering the question without answering the question. Folks, she really does not give a damn. When she tells you that she doesn't buy those numbers, I'm trying to tell you that the life of a child, children are innocent, period. She's telling you she doesn't buy the numbers. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. Children are innocent. They are killing kids. She does not have a problem with that. And instead of saying that because then she'll be busted, she has to try to tell you that she doesn't believe the numbers. That's the pivot. That hasn't okay, any, see, that this isn't is, this anything is that's been verified. This is the problem. But it a depends on the context of what's happening. Do I condemn certain up there actions and of the state of Israel? Denying Palestinians Absolutely. their reality. Do I think Israel is always You're right? You're denying Palestinians not. their reality. This is why Palestinians Israel have to show their dead kids on other, camera. Please. Do that's I think over. everything Israel has done, even in this war, is correct? No. There's no problem with saying that. What has been wrong? What have they done? I, I already said the same thing about Hamas. Hang on, Abby. I already said the same thing about Hamas. Emily, tell me what Israel's done that's wrong in your eyes. I think that that should have been a priority from the beginning uh, in order to plan a safe evacuation route before they implemented a military plan. I think that everything has been done too late. Okay. The evacuation route, you mean the evacuation routes that Israel blocked? There were Palestinians that were on video saying they were going to those exit locations and Israel was bombing the exits where they told them to go to evacuate. You talking about those routes, Emily? Notice Emily didn't say anything about the killing of the children. Okay? Because she don't give a shit. Typical Karen. Abby, what would you say Hamas have done wrong? Uh, I Look, I, again, I'm not going to sit up here. I don't even know really what happened. You can't find our... anything. to condemn rape? You can't find look, anything, look, everything, anything to say they did that was wrong? All the lies that have been perpetrated. Look, Hamas killing civilians, uh, I'm sure atrocities were committed on both sides um, on October 7th. I, I'm on sure October that 7th, many atrocities civilians were, were killed. Committed. I don't know, what, what I don't know did how Israel many civilians were killed by Israel. Emily. Emily, I can't even hear myself talk because you just can't stop right, talking. Let, let Abby speak. Um, there's so many lies that were put out by Israeli authorities that it's really hard to parse through. Look, I mean, we don't know how many civilians were killed in the crossfire by Israeli soldiers um, enlisting the Han Hannibal Directive. So, uh, look, the, the mass rape, what the beheaded about the babies, the, the ripping the babies out of pregnant women's stomachs. I mean, all of these things are such egregious lies okay, that I yeah. really what just can't the, sit okay, up here and condemn. Abby and I don't know if Pierce Morgan has done this, but he should probably invite the gray zone on to discuss this as well, because the thing is the gray zone, they were the first ones to debunk that story from the New York times. And then the intercept also debunked it even further. So that story has been debunked multiple times, but yet all of these Zionist propagandists continuing to go into show after show, spreading the same lie over and over again. There is this saying that we used to tell the students in college, repeat, repeat, repeat. So if you continue to repeat something, it'll eventually start to sink in and people will start to believe it. So they know that the story has been debunked, that the New York Times article has been debunked, ladies and gentlemen, but they are continuing to repeat the lie so that it sinks into the brains of the American people so that you will believe it. If I tell you, if I sit up here and tell you 
that the Boston Celtics are going to win this whole damn thing. And let's say we're in second place. We're actually doing pretty good right now. But let's say we're in second place. But I tell you, we're going to come up from behind. We're going to win. We're going to win. And I keep repeating that and drill it in your head. It won't be long before now that you'll start to believe it's a possibility. That's how repetition works. That is why they're repeating the lies. Things that I don't even know what happened. What about the atrocities which Hamas recorded and filmed themselves and then posted to the world to brazenly boast about what they were doing? What about that? Look, nothing that Hamas did on October 7th compares to what Israel has done in no, response. No, no, I'm asking you a direct question about the fact that they boasted I, you, about you, the mass murder they were committing. But the thing is, you guys just make it all about October 7th. And that's what I'm saying. It, it all pales in comparison, Pierce. But if you can't that condemn anything Hamas has done... That happened, I already said. You haven't condemned them. I already said them. killing civilians is wrong. So what killing they did, civilians is wrong. So what Hamas did on October 7th so was wrong. what does that make what hang, Israel hang has done? Notice they don't mention what the IDF did on October 7th, even though Netanyahu's advisor has actually come forward about this on CNN before that they, they got the number wrong. Remember they said 1400 and then they had to scale that number back to 1200 because some of those people, the IDF actually killed their self. Remember that? Now I wish with Abby, with the October 7th stuff, I wish Abby would have talked to like maybe, um, gray zone or, be Katie. Maybe she did. I don't know. I wish she would have talked to them about the October 7th stuff before she did this debate, because once she said, well, I don't really know what happened on October 7th, then that was where like Pierce and Emily can go in for the kill because they're like, oh, well, she don't even really know. So, you know, what is she saying? Right. But the point that I think she leads it back to is that this is not just about October 7th. This has been a, this has been an issue. We're talking about expelling the people right from the land. This has been an issue going all the way back to 1947. Hang on. I'm trying to unpick your argument. So if it's wrong to kill civilians, were Hamas wrong to do what they did on October the 7th, given how many civilians were brutally murdered? Are you doing the same thing to Emily? And if I'm not, just asking, why? do you think it was wrong? Why are you not sitting her? Do you and think it was apart? wrong? Is it wrong to kill thirteen thousand? Why children? can't you answer a Is simple question? Is it wrong question? to kill one hundred? I already said it. I already said it. Pierce. Was it wrong? I'm not going to sit here. You're 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 basically comparing Hamas to Israel. No, I'm not comparing anything. You really said just now. Yes, unless you I'm, are. Unless I'm mistaken, you just said to me that the killing of innocent civilians is wrong. I then asked you fairly self-evidently, I think, the question, that in that case, given that Hamas showed us on tape them killing civilians, innocent civilians, on October the 7th, do you accept that was wrong? Yes or no? You saw, you saw the tape? Yes, yeah, they, they showed us. You saw the tape of them killing innocent civilians? Yes, they literally broadcast it to the world, yes. We um, I never saw this video. And I've watched, look, I'm all on, when it came, this all started, I was all on social media. I've never seen this video. What video was he referring to? Shielded. And so do Israeli soldiers. Fine, in a why can't you fashion. forget it's, it's Israel like watching, for a moment? It's like watching. Are forget you, Israel for a moment. It's like watching Nazis. If it's wrong to kill innocent civilians, II, Abby. On social did, media. If it's wrong to kill innocent civilians, I'll ask you one more time. You haven't got to an answer. Up to you. But viewers are watching this and they know you haven't answered. You think it's wrong to kill innocent civilians? I already civilians? answered. I, 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 think, I think it's wrong to kill innocent civilians. So what Hamas did was wrong? She's not going to answer. Well, I let her answer if she wants to. <laughs> Last time. I'm going to ask it. So. I don't. I, I already, look, I already told you I'm not going to sit here and condemn what Hamas did. Right. I understand why, and I don't have to agree with what Hamas did, Right. To understand that wasn't why my question. I just happened. asked you whether to the mass murder perpetrated on October the 7th was wrong. To understand why there's blowback for horrific policies of apartheid and ethnic cleansing. There's obviously inevitably so going October to be blowback October the 7th was blowback. Those policies. Yes, absolutely it was right. blowback. But was it wrong? 100%. Was it wrong? <sighs> I'm not, look, I, I don't know how, how much you want to just go around the mulberry bush like this. Look, it's a fairly um, straightforward can, question. I don't see how anyone 
can come on a show like this. Is doing how is can wrong. you take part in a debate like this and say killing innocent civilians kill is wrong? But I'm not going to tell you what Hamas did on October the seventh was wrong. It makes so, Pierce, do you have a problem with Israel killing innocent civilians prior to October 7th? It's no sense, Abby. No sense. I'm not going to sit here and condemn Hamas. Okay. I'm not going to do the obligatory right. ritual, I hear you. ritual that everyone is browbeaten into doing. I'm just not going to do it, Pierce. I, I mean, I, what honestly, Israel I is think, doing right now is I think your genocide. denial... I think your denial that what they did was a heinous act of terrorism is actually in its way as bad. I said, it, I I'm said about to finish my sentence. I said atrocities were committed. Yeah. And I think they atrocities wrong. are wrong and killing innocent civilians are wrong. So Look, Hamas were wrong again, to do it. Again, you're browbeating me into trying no, to I'm say I'm just Hamas asking for a straightforward wrong. answer. This was a horrific terrorist attack. I, I, think, I already I, answered you. I think your Pierce. failure to say that Hamas did something wrong is terrible. I think Emily's failure to accept that 12, 13,000 children have been killed. Is he also terrible, right? I think that the denial going on on both sides here, which I hear, is frankly appalling. It's First of all, I'm not denying. I'm saying that we don't have the evidence yet of what the numbers are. And we well, don't how know many what the do you think it is, is then? Oh, Pierce, stop, because at the end of the day, you on Emily's side. Don't get it twisted. At the end of the day, you are on Emily's side. Remember, this is, you know, Pierce Morgan, it's Pierce Morgan Uncensored, but we know at the end of the day, you got to ask everybody that come on to that show, but do you condemn Hamas? Israel created Hamas. Never forget that. Abby Martin, I don't know how you withstood that. <laughs> I don't know how you withstood that, Abby. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but kudos to you. <laughs>